Chapter 16 Learning to Speak Life After school one afternoon I heard my son say a couple of swear words. That kind of language is not acceptable, I told him. Why are you using those words when you know you shouldn't? The kids at school talk that way, he explained. Other people do it, so it's okay for you. I questioned. Then in my next sentence I rattled off a string of four-letter words I used to say before I met the Lord and was refined by His Spirit. With a look of horror and shock he exclaimed, Mom, why are you talking like that? Other people talk that way, I said. How does it make you feel when I talk like that? It makes me feel awful. You know, I can talk like that any time I want. But I choose not to. When I say those words it makes you feel bad because it hurts your spirit. When you talk like that, it hurts my spirit. Imagine what it does to God's spirit. You have a choice whether to grieve God's spirit with the words you say or to glorify Him. He'll love you either way, and so will I, but one way will bless you, and one way will hurt you. I didn't hear Christopher say any words like that again until he was a teenager. Then we had this conversation all over again. I pray to this day he will remember it. I know my teaching method may seem shocking. It shocked me too, and I asked God to cleanse me from the contamination I felt for even speaking those words. But those words did not come from my heart. I said them only as a means of demonstrating their destructiveness. I'm not recommending that you adopt my methods of teaching, but that you accept my experience as a valid example of the power of what we speak. We create a world for ourselves by what we speak. Words have power, and we can either speak life or death into a situation. The Bible says that what we say can get us into trouble or keep us away from it. It can even save our lives. He who guards his mouth preserves his life, but he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. Proverbs 13, 3. We need to ask God to put a guard over our own mouth as well as the mouth of our child. Speech that is not godly or not of the Lord, such as, I'm no good, I wish I was dead, life is terrible, people are horrible, I will never be anything special, does not reflect a heart filled with the Holy Spirit. It reflects the work of darkness. And that is exactly what will play itself out on the stage of your child's life, if you don't help him monitor what he says. The Bible says that when we go to be with the Lord we will have to account for every careless word we have spoken but we also pay for them here on earth. And the price is too high to pay for something that can easily be controlled by our own will. We can speak love, joy, and peace into our world, or we can speak strife, hatred, deception, and all other manifestations of evil. It's our choice. We want our children to speak life. This doesn't mean they can't be honest about negative feelings. But those words should be spoken for the purpose of confession, understanding, and submission to God for healing, not as tools of destruction. When our children's words reflect negatively on themselves, others, their situation, or the world around them, we must encourage them to see in God's word all that could be better said. The best way to improve speech is to improve the heart, for out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks Matthew 12, 34. A heart filled with the Holy Spirit, the truth of God's Word, and the love of God will produce godly speech that brings life to the speaker as well as the listener. This is where our point of prayer should begin. Prayer Lord, I pray that name of child will choose to use speech that glorifies you. Fill his her heart with your spirit and your truth, so that what overflows from his her mouth will be words of life and not death. Put a monitor over his her mouth so that every temptation to use profane negative, cruel, hurtful, uncaring, unloving, or compassionless language would pierce his her spirit and make him her feel uncomfortable. I pray that obscene or foul language be so foreign to him her that, if words like that ever do find their way through his her lips, they will be like gravel in his her mouth and he, she will be repulsed by them. Help him her to hear himself herself, so that words don't come out carelessly or thoughtlessly. Keep him her from being snared by the words of his her mouth. You've promised that whoever guards his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Proverbs 21, 23. Help him her to put a guard over his her mouth and keep far away from adversity.
Your word says, the death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 18, 21. May he she speak life and not death. May he she be quick to listen, and slow to speak, so that his her speech will always be seasoned with grace. Equip him her to know how, what, and when to speak to anyone in any situation. Enable him her to always speak words of hope, health, encouragement, and life, and to resolve, that is her mouth will not sin. In Jesus' name I pray weapons of warfare. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Psalm 19, 14. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. Matthew 12, 35. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Matthew 12 36 37. Pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. Proverbs 16 24. There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Proverbs 12 18. If you liked this channel, subscribe to our channel. Help us to keep growing. Thank you very much.